Hey friends, Kyle here. I hope you're doing absolutely wonderful today. And today we're gonna to be talking about another coffee grinder. In fact, this one right here. This is the 58 Espresso SPTK-38G. Terrible name for a coffee grinder, but a great grinder that is sub $300, that boasts low retention, the ability to do espresso and filter coffee, at least that's their claim, a bird geometry and material that very closely resembles the Commandante C40. And speaking of resembles, a body design and functionality that very closely resembles the Lago Mini. Uh, in fact, it's a direct clone. And so today I'm gonna to talk about that because this is a grinder that I absolutely love. In fact, I've said the Lago Mini is one of the best coffee grinders under 500 bucks for somebody who wants filter coffee and espresso on one grinder uh, with low retention and a small compact design. We're gonna brew some coffee and I'm gonna share all my thoughts in this video. So by the end, you should have an informed decision on the SBTK-38G. But before we dive into this, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Third Wave Water. Coffee is 98% water. And while the coffee you purchase is one of the most important attributes to brewing great cups of coffee at home, also water is not something you should overlook. In fact, not only is water really inconsistent from country to country and dissolved solids and the water alkalinity, but also from city to city as well. And that's where a product like Third Wave Water comes in. Now this is a solution that you add to demineralize water or like distilled water and it makes the perfect water solution for coffee. Now there are different profiles that you can get from Third Wave Water, including the dark roast profile, espresso profile, or even their classic profile for pour overs and your typical drip coffee. Now if you wanna check out Third Wave Water, I can't recommend this enough. This is a product I've been using for years. Use the link in the top of the description and you're gonna get 10% off your order. Thank you Third Wave Water so much for sponsoring this video. So let's start off with some of the specs on this grinder. Now this is a stepped grinder versus the Lagoons Mini's step grinder it feels very satisfying to use but I have a bit of an issue with it I don't find that this is great for espresso and on their website they claim that this can grind for espresso and that's definitely true but I find that the stepped adjustments are less than ideal for somebody who wants to brew espresso at home. And that's because when dialing in espresso, it can be so finicky. I found myself wanting a setting in between and notch that existed. How the grinder works, very similar to the Laco Mini. It has a hopper up here that you would feed your beans. Uh, the burrs are exposed there. And with this powered on, it will grind into this magnetic dosing cup that sits right here. The retention is unnoticeable on this grinder. I'm getting less than 0.2 grams of coffee retention which is really great. I have noticed some static issues while grinding on this grinder. For whatever reason, I haven't noticed that on my Lago Mini, but it is something to be noted with this grinder. Now, this works very similar to Lago Mini. It's got a little power button on the side here that you can turn on and off your grinder with when plugged in. And it uses a magnetic lid on the top here. Now, this grinder also has an optional bellows, which I think is very interesting. You see popping out this little lid wooden piece here allows you to take a bellows and actually place it in here and use this lid that it comes with to bellows out any coffee that's in here. By the way, this is a DF64 bellows. So if you have something like this sitting around, it'll work on this grinder. Now taking apart this grinder is pretty simple. Very similar to that Lago Mini. Once again, if you unscrew the hopper all the way, you then have access to the burrs. And inside this burr chamber is an identical setup to the Lago Mini. Like everything is one for one. Okay, there's nothing different about this. This is identical to that Lago Mini burr chamber, which is not necessarily a bad thing because I do love the Lago Mini. I think it's a fantastic burr grinder. It looks like they literally took a Lago Mini and put a skirt around the grinder. They might not claim that, but I mean, it's just absolutely obvious. Now removing a bolt and a couple washers allows you to remove its burr. And you can see that this is a beautiful burr. This is a 420 high nitrogen stainless steel, very similar to the Commandante C40. This is the Commandante C40 burr, the Nitro Blade, often known as one of the best conical burrs for filter coffee, for the sweetness and overall profiles that it creates. Uh, and this right here beside it is the SPTK38G. What? That's, it's the same. It's the same burr. It's identical in every single way, other than if you turn this upside down, you can see that this one says Commandante on it. If I wasn't to look at the writing on the bottom of this burr, I would honestly think that these are identical. Now what's interesting is the 
Lago Mini has a very similar burr geometry as well. The difference being the Option O burr is not identical. It's a little bit taller than the SPTK and this Commandante C40 Nitro Blade. So that means the feeding angles are going to be adjusted just slightly. Ultimately, the results are very similar, but this does have a coating on it, which will affect the way that those coffee beans are cut and broken down. Versus this, there's no coating, it's just a polished finish. Now, speaking of that, Optional is coming out with a new moonshine burr. It's currently in testing. I hope to be able to test that and share some thoughts with you in the near future. Um, but right now, we just have this obsidian. Here's the adjustment collars for both the SPTK and the Option O. The only difference here being that this one's a little bit taller to fit inside that skirt for its stepped adjustment. This one here being stepless and on the outside of the grinder, this one sits in there. But other than that, it's nearly identical in every single way. Down here we have a dosing cup and it's also magnetic. Now, definitely not as nice as an experience as the Lagol Mini. In fact, the overall experience with this grinder is just not the same, okay? It's nice, it's aluminum, but it just doesn't feel as premium. Okay, this grinder here feels solid. It feels like I could drop it, it's not gonna break. I wouldn't suggest dropping it, but this is just a grinder that's built well. And I just can't say that I have that same confidence with this grinder. Now, this SPTK is definitely a good value. Right at 295, it's actually about $80 cheaper than the 48 millimeter Lago Mini. Also, you can probably find them in stock. So that's appealing for a lot of people, right? That's a huge discount at these price points. At sub $300, it checks a lot of boxes. For, for some people, that's not gonna be okay. Like some of you are, are going to want to just go with the option O because they designed it. Right, they, they engineered it, they created it, right? In the same way that Commandante created this burr, you're not gonna love that they just kind of copied the burr, but for some of you, you want best value, right? You don't care who made it, you don't care uh, what who was ripped off, you just want the best product on your coffee bar for the least amount of money. Now, today I'm not telling you how you should feel, rather I'm just giving you the information that's been provided to me so that you can make an informed purchasing decision. I would love to know your thoughts on this whole topic down in the comments below. So what about stalling? Because the Lago Mini did have an issue with stalling depending on which model you had. And while mine never did stall, many did. And the SPTK 38G originally did claim that it doesn't stall and mine still did stall even though my Lago Mini didn't. But since I reached out to them about this, they have issued a new motor for these grinders. And while I haven't been able to test the new motor, all the new units should be good against stalling. Let's brew some coffee. And unsurprisingly, this grinder creates delicious coffee. It creates a lot of sweetness and well-rounded cups, but just enough clarity to be able to discern between a nice wash Ethiopian and a double wash Kenyan. This is a delicious cup of coffee, and honestly, it shouldn't be surprised based on the geometry and ergonomics of this grinder. So some of you might be wondering, why not a blind taste test between these two? There's a couple reasons, but one of them being is just, I find that that's not a good objective test. Uh, rather, I've been testing these for months side by side. So this result is a cumulative experience of all my testing over the past few months. Uh, and what I would say is that the cups produced from this grinder are similar to the C40. This is grinding faster than most people will hand grind at 160 RPMs. So, depending on how fast you grind on the C40, it's actually gonna change the flavor in the cup. A topic that, honestly, we need to address in the future because RPM and cup profiles are vastly underexplored in the world of coffee. Regardless, the cup profiles are very similar and what you'd expect from a burr that has very similar geometry and burr materials. Now, compared to the optional Lago Mini, I do find that there is a little bit more sweetness in the Lago Mini uh, and a bit more clarity in the SPTK. This might be confirmation bias, but it's ever so slight and I wouldn't pick one over the other based on the cup profiles. I find them just too similar. And unless they're sitting side by side, you're probably not gonna know the difference. So to kind of summarize my thoughts on the coffee that this grinder produces, the filter coffee is fantastic as you would expect from a bird geometry that is so legendary in this space, but it's also a copycat, right? So. Some people don't mind that, some people do. That's kind of what it is. When it comes to espresso, it can also produce fantastic, delicious espresso, but uh, I don't find that the notch system adequate for espresso, in my personal experience. I much prefer the stepless system on the Lago Mini. For some of you, 
This is like, this is the best revelation ever and you're gonna probably buy this before this video finishes. All power to you. Uh, for some of you, you're gonna have a personal conviction to wanna support the company who designed this. So to summarize here, the SPTK 38G is a pretty interesting grinder. This is a grinder that really is a carbon copy of this and the Comandante C40 kind of put into one grinder. Some people are gonna love that. Some people are gonna be annoyed by that. Ultimately, it's a coffee grinder on the market that you should be aware of. Now, before you go, I'm also gonna be giving this grinder away to one of my Patreon supporters, as well as the SPTK-1 Espresso Brewer with Flow Profiling. If you're interested in winning either of those and you're not yet a Patreon supporter, I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. Uh, it's as low as a pr the price of like a cup of coffee and you can win gear that I review, as well as support the channel beyond that subscribe and like button. So I'll leave that down below as well. There's a Discord that you can join. Is this a grinder that you're gonna grab? Is this a grinder that you're interested in? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you got this far, let me know if you uh, like the new angle, the new setup for this studio, trying new things. Let me know by writing hashtag angles in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. I love every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace. Have a great day.